Right now, though, this is, uh, we just described this morning's show as, uh, especially this hour, the Sharon Show. We just got finished speaking uh, on the telephone uh, about a great program which is coming up at the Hoshkiss Library in Sharon with Yurik and Kawa on the movie Patton. Uh, and uh, now we get to speak about uh, another gem that's in Sharon other than the Hoshkiss Library, and that is the Sharon Audubon Center. We have the director, Eileen Fielding, uh, joining us this morning. Eileen, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, so, uh, Sharon Audubon, I have to tell you, years and years and years and years and years ago, a guy by the Marshall Case, uh, Marshall Case ran the Audubon. And it, it was my first exposure to Audubon. And I don't think, even though my family's lived here for years, uh, the, even back then, the, the, the depth and width of, of what uh, Sharon Audubon Center means to our area, and it's only grown over the years with the acquisition of the Miles uh, property over on Calkins Town Road as well. Uh, so I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the first thing first is that uh, in my notes here, it's, it's, it says that Sharon Audubon is, is coming upon uh, your fundraising uh, in May. And what most people I, th I still think don't realize to this day is that you make your own budget. You make, it's, it's your money. You are the ones that uh, really are responsible for keeping what goes on at, the, at Sharon Audubon going on. Yeah, absolutely. We are a part of the National Audubon Society, as as most people know. But um, Sharon Audubon and the Miles Sanctuary uh, traditionally uh, do all they can. Uh, we do all we can to uh, raise our own budget, and we are fortunate to be in a community that uh, is interested in what we do and supports what we do. So um, we do hold a, a, our biggest annual fundraiser in may called raptors and riesling yep. uh, and that's that's what's coming up right now and uh, that what but now uh, that that program is what probably about five maybe five six years old yep yep um and it was uh the invention of our local advisory board now uh, we have a, a wonderful local board that uh really took this idea and ran with it and um, it's essentially become the sort of signature Memorial Day weekend kickoff summer garden party <laughs> in Sharon uh, in a beautiful setting right at the Sharon Audubon Center. You know, it's, it's when our gardens are just starting to bloom, and um, it's just getting to be a wonderful time to, to be outdoors. And it is great wine, great food, uh, great company, and large birds of prey um, mingling with the crowd, which is sort of our, our unique signature on a, on a garden party. And, of course, uh, last year uh, and again this year, we're going to have to do it virtually, which um, involves a little creativity, but um, that we managed to pull it off. Yeah, now, this is, now, is this event virtual again this year? It's, uh, yeah, it's virtual again this year um, simply because uh, we decided it would be a little early to ask, uh, two or three hundred people to gather together yeah. in close proximity under a tent when we're supposed to be eating, drinking, and talking together. Um, didn't we're not quite ready for that. So um, the the socializing part of the event is going to be virtual. But uh, one thing I I want to make really clear because I think not everybody knows this uh, when we say that the center is closed, uh, all we mean is that our main building is closed and our grounds are open. So people can come and visit the aviaries and, uh, you know, have sort of a, a close one-on-one -on -one experience with, with our birds of prey. And uh, they can walk the gardens, walk the trails. Um, that's all uh, still perfectly open to everyone. So if uh, someone participates in Raptors and Riesling as a sponsor, um, we're very happy to arrange uh, a small group encounter uh, sort of on an individual basis with our birds. We're just not going to do it in a big crowd. So, yes, virtual, but remember there's a do-it-yourself component where you can come and visit the center also. Uh, by the way, if people want more information on this, Sharon.Audubon.org slash events, and when you get there, you'll see the, the link to go to the uh, the different events, and you scroll down to the uh, virtual raptors and Riesling. Uh, and there's a little uh, a place where you can just click and, and register right there. You know, the, your, Sharon Audubon is a lot. Uh, we are a lot like Sharon Audubon is that most people see us as a as an NPR station, thinking that we get money from NPR, uh, and it's totally different. Uh, for what for for us to do what we have to do, we have to raise 
the bulk of our money locally. And I've always appreciated uh, the fact that people, no matter, it seems no matter what demographic they're in, uh, they love the Sharon Audubon Center. And the thing that I always loved about going to events there uh, and even uh, just going there on a weekend is that families can come there and walk the trails uh, with kids that are uh, in strollers and with grandparents that might have to be in uh, in um, in wheelchairs because it's the, the trails that you have there not, are not only for people uh, who can walk perfectly but you've got trails that every member of everybody family can 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 enjoy. Yeah, um, we like to think that, and we're working on making that better. Um, that kind of access, so that um, you know, people have even more places to go easily uh, when they come here. Um, you know, part of the charm is that some of these trails are a little rough and a little rocky, and you have to be a little adventurous. Um, but you can you can certainly access our gardens and our aviaries uh, pretty easily, and and we want to be able to extend that access. I like your comparison uh, with your radio station and NPR. Um, our relationship with national is is quite a bit like that in that uh, most of our activity is local, but because we're an Audubon center, we also have uh, access to the the national and international uh, programs and and influence that the National Audubon Society has. So um, it's sort of the best of both worlds. And now, when we while we talk about uh, the center uh, is closed, that's just the building. People can go there and 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 walk the trails and 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 and, and take a look at what's going on. Uh, we are in that season now, and you know, even if you're not a bird person, I found out in this area, even if you don't know anything about birds, everybody seems to notice when that first bird returns to their yard in the springtime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And one of the things that's really fun about working here is that we hear about all this. Uh, you know, people will see birds, and they don't, they don't know what a particular bird is, and uh, they'll contact us. And that's one of the ways that, uh, besides the fact that we're out birding ourselves, of course, but that's one of the ways that uh, we're tracking the wildlife traffic and the bird traffic coming through this area. And uh, it's really wonderful to hear what, uh, what people are seeing. And, and, and right now we are really full. Is is it full blown or is it towards the end of the of the uh, spring migration for birds? Oh, it's just revving up yeah. right now. Yeah, there there have been birds that have been arriving for uh, for a few weeks now. So, you know, the winter wrens are here. The Louisiana water thrushes are here. The palm warblers are coming through. The pine warblers are coming through. But the big wave is just about to hit us. Uh, Mid May and late May. All those birds that uh, winter either in the southern U.S. or in the Caribbean or uh, in uh, Central and South America, they are headed for the forests of the Northeast because this is a really great place for them to uh, nest and raise their young. Or they're headed farther north uh, into the Canadian forest or, or the tundra, and they're all coming through <laughs> in the next several weeks. So... Um, for the folks who are uh, who, who have just started to get interested in birds, maybe because they've been at home um, looking out their windows uh, more than usual, um, it's going to get really exciting. Um, and and we are holding uh, bird walks for beginners so that people can start to get a handle on what they're seeing. You know, when my mother built built her second house, a log cabin on Smith Hill Road in Sharon, when she built it out in front of it, she uh, in in front of her porch in the yard, uh, she installed. Uh, in, Probably about twenty yards away from each other, uh, three evergreen trees, and there was one. There's one huge regular tree, uh, and she did it in the mind because she loves to feed birds. And it's so amazing uh, the coverage and that it gives the birds that you can walk out. Uh, when I used to live there, and I used to walk out to go to work at at five o'clock in the morning, and you hear the different bird calls from the different <laughs> from the different uh, evergreen trees and from the regular trees. It really is uh, a pretty spectacular around here. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I should mention, you know, for people who are uh, starting to try to figure out birds, uh, a lot of the time, uh, especially, for example, a singing evergreen tree, we hear all these wonderful songs and birds are somewhere in the tree. Um, sometimes you learn the birds not so much by what they look like, uh, so. but you just start learning the songs. And uh, if you recognize a song, that tells you there's an interesting bird in there that you should be looking for. And sometimes that leads you to the sighting. And uh, luckily, there are some wonderful birding apps now uh, that people can use. Although, you know, of course, we feel there's no substitute for all going out 
together with uh, someone who knows the birds. But um, that can help you learn some of some of those songs, and uh, you detect a lot more birds that way. Well, once again, our, our speaking this morning to Eileen Fielding, director of uh, the Sharon Audubon Center. Uh, once again, uh, the building is closed, but the center is open if you'd like to get out there, stretch your legs, uh, and uh, and can really walk there. But also, uh, their big fundraiser is coming up uh, on May 30th. Uh, that is a Sunday. Uh, the uh, Raptors and Riesling, uh, and you can go to Sharon.autobahn.org, click on their calendar, and then click on that, and you can register for that event. That is a big fundraiser coming up uh, that they do every year. And hopefully uh, this summer, maybe we'll get even more back to normal where uh, some of the things that go on at Audubon will even expand once again this summer. Oh, yeah, we expect so, uh, because so much of, of what we're about happens outdoors. Um, that gives us a lot of scope to um, get right back to normal as soon as possible. Well, Eileen, once again, thanks for joining us this morning. And we hope to have you on as a regular guest here uh, every month or so, just keeping us updated what's going on. That would be great. Thanks so much, Marshall. All right. Take care. You too. Once again, uh, Sharon Audubon Center, Sharon.audubon.org on the web.